So till now we have seen the concepts related to the pipelining and why do we use pipelining and what is the kind of speed up you are going to get through pipelining. We have solved these kind of questions. But there's something, there's some kind of problems, a uh, problem which is also associated with this kind of approach and that is called as hazards or you can say dependencies. So the topic name is hazards or dependencies dependencies so what is this hazards or dependencies uh, you can view it like this see uh, the main of, main of the pipelining is to get cpi is equal to one that is cycles per instruction is equal to one but sometimes or in a lot of cases we actually do not get the cycles per instruction as one and that the reason why we do not get the cycles per instruction as one is categorized as hazard and there are three types of hazards that we get number one there is called as structural hazard structural hazards number two there's something called as control hazards control hazards and number three there's something called as data hazards so we have structural hazards control hazards and data hazards we are going to see these hazards one by one and initially we'll start with a structural hazard so this structural hazard mainly occur, occurs because one or more phases of the pipeline will try to uh, use the same resource so let me write it here properly uh, yeah so the structural hazard occurs when one or more one or more uh, phases of the pipeline of the pipeline will try to use the same resource to use the same resources then we have this kind of structure hazards and this generally this control hazards occurs when we have uh, some resources which are you know which leads to an unpredictable state or you can see whenever the control the flow of control becomes unpredictable then uh, it uh, creates a control hazards so it is there when whenever the flow of control whenever the flow of control becomes unpredictable becomes unpredictable then we get control hazards for example these control hazards are because of uh, some conditional uh, you know branch instructions uh, it can be conditional branch or jump instructions or unconditional branch or jump instructions sometimes function call and see there, there may be different reasons why when we are jumping you know uh, this is because when we are not following the serial flow of control on the program so this is that is called as control hazard in the similar way there is something called as a data hazard so we'll discuss the data hazard not here because here i'm not going to discuss the control hazard also but I, i've just given you a line related to the control hazard so that you can differentiate between the structural hazard and the control hazard but still we are going to discuss with the about the data hazard at later point of time so you can just imagine or you can just see the data hazard is related to the data items so here the main aim of uh, this particular video is to understand what is the structural hazards okay so what happens is whenever you execute any instruction now you know there are four to five phases where this particular instruction can be divided and those phases are instruction fetch we have instruction decode operand fetch execute and write back so you can view it like this so we have four phases while executing a particular instruction number one is instruction fetch then we have instruction decode then we have operand fetch then we have execute and then we have write back now we generally up you know implement all these five phases into you know, different stages so that uh, we will be able to implement the pipeline okay and you can uh, view see sometimes when uh, you know one if one instruction has executed the instruction fetch if the, that instruction is executing the instruction decode then we can be bring one more instruction uh, to do the instruction fetch so there will be one more instruction to do the instruction fetch and then it will do instruction decode then it will do 
operand fetch then it, it will do execute and then it will do write back okay so this is how we have seen the pipelining right so here we have seen there's something uh, this is representing uh, the clock cycles right so there can be so many clock cycles and there may be different instructions like this instruction one instruction two instruction three and so on right so here just assume that we are having two instructions okay now here in this case you can see uh, if you see the entire structure of the pipelining that the diagram that I have already shown you the entire structure of the pipelining if two or more things are trying to access the same resource then there will become some kind of problem okay like for example here uh, here in this particular case uh, okay so fine I should show it like this okay fine uh, right so there's no issues here but uh, here uh, what we do what we want is uh, you know that every uh, cycle we should get one instruction out of this pipeline okay so again every second one every cycle uh, one instruction should get out of this pipeline okay so here again we do instruction fetch instruction decode operand fetch execute and there will be a write back okay now uh, here you can see uh, if you see this phase which is right back and here also operand fetch in both these cases we are trying to access the memory right in the same way if you see this one and this one in both these cases we are trying to access the memory simultaneously that means there are two uh, you know two uh, instructions which are trying to access the memory simultaneously so there may be some kind of kind uh, no this uh, structural hazard that can occur here okay so how this will occur let me show it to you with a diagram what is the general diagram of pipelining uh, this is representing the memory structure here so it is representing the memory uh, which is actually cache memory and uh, we can have even uh, main memory here so we can also have picker memory here which is the main memory okay so this is representing the main memory okay so this cache memory actually communicate with the main memory and th all these phases that we have so the you can you can roughly categorize into four phases actually so all these phases can be implemented here where the first phase is representing instruction fetch and here in case of instruction fetch we'll be having something called as fetch and decode logic fetch and decode logic uh, which is combining both the fetch instruction fetch and instruction decode and this in fetch and decode logic will be having its own program counter it will be having a instruction register okay so it is communicating with this memory now in the same way we will be having the other phases which is the second phase is the data uh, and read logic so this is where we have data and read logic okay so this phase is actually representing operand uh, no operand fetch or you can say operand load actually i should say operand load so actually the other the different books have given different diagrams so yeah so let me f draw the diagram first and let me show explain it to you from this particular diagram so alu and then we have something called as data write logic so data write logic okay and here we have the entire register file which is shared register file so this is a kind of a block diagram here okay so the first stage is the stage s1 it is representing instruction fetch the stage s2 is representing operand load stage s3 is representing alu operation that is arithmetical logical operation and stage s4 is representing operand store so operand store okay which is actually also called as write back so if you implement a pipeline like this where we divided the entire system into four uh, four different stages now if the first instruction is there then the first instruction will be executing uh, instruction fetch operand load uh, that next will be the execute which is which happens in alu and then we have operand store which is also called as the write back stage now the second instruction 
so that second instruction will be executing again instruction fetch operand load then we have execute then they had then we have and store which is also called as write back okay so this is the kind of structure that we have studied in our books again here you can see uh, here again uh, there's a overlapping between operand load and instruction fetch and why i'm saying there's a overlapping because in case of operand load and instruction fetch both the cases will try to access the memory simultaneously at the same time okay so you can say here in this particular case this is just a simple example of a case so here we'll trying to use same resources same resources okay and uh, so here in case of instruction fetch we need to access of the bus and the memory to do instruction fetch we need to access of or we need access of the bus and memory to do instruction fetch and then in case of instruction load again we are going to require the you know, memory now because of this these two phases cannot occur simultaneously right so because they are trying to access the same resource simultaneously so obviously you cannot occur uh, no you cannot do these two uh, no uh, these two uh, these two operations simultaneously so we need to you know remove this kind of dependency uh, by by having the structural hazards so you now you understand what is a structural hazard structural hazard is that sometimes we share some resources and uh, if there are some resources which are shared and two or more phases are trying to access the same resource then we will not be able to provide those resources effectively to the processes and will not be able to do the pipelining properly now to remove this case what we have to do is we we cannot execute this instruction fetch here because if we are having in operand load then we cannot execute the instruction fetch then what we have to do is we have to apply this entire pipelining like this we'll be having instruction fetch operand load execute and uh, uh, this is operand store and then we cannot have instruction fetch with the operand load so we have to actually st stall the pipelining here so we'll not be executing any instruction here so that is called as stalling i've already explained to you then we have instruction fetch here operand load here then execute and then open st store now if you stall the pipelining here then you can see there is no dependency there is no problem for this phase but here again there is something called as there is some structural dependency is there because we are going to do open store and open load at the same time so again the, uh, the pipelining will not be possible and because of this so you can see uh, the number of cycles are increasing so here we, we were having only one cycle and here we are having two cycles right so still there is a structural dependency here so to, to remove this structural dependency again i have to do a stall here but if you do a stall here then again instruction fetch and this operand store both of them are going to you know overlap with each other and obviously these two operations cannot occur simultaneously or what we can do is then we can also perform these operations like this we have instruction fetch operand load execute operand store then we can do instruction fetch here then here we can stall the pipelining then we have operand load then we have execute and then operand store again for the next coming instruction there is i3 instruction we have to perform some kind of stall here so that the two um, you know the, we are not going to ex ask for the two resources simultaneously so we are going to do instruction fetch here now you can see because of this structural hazard this is this time is actually wasting these cycles are wasting so because of these cycles are wasting so we will not be able to get we will not be able to get be able to get uh cpi is equal to 1 right so this is because of structural hazards now what can kind of solution can you propose for the structural hazard what kind of solution can you propose uh, think about it the easiest solution that you can propose to remove the structural hazard that is the resource duplication or replication that is called as resource duplication or a replication or replication what is a resource duplication or replication is that if there are some kind of resources which are which both of them are commonly accessing then we duplicate those kind of 
resources so that uh, you know uh, even if they are trying to access parallelly then will not be having any kind of problems okay so but if uh, let us suppose uh, the first phase is instruction fetch if we you know if we do a source duplication or replication in case of instruction fetch that means in case of the first stage which is the s1 instruction fetch stage assuming this is the instruction fetch stage s1 instruction fetch actually i'm drawing this diagram as it is here so for shortcut i'm not drawing it here so for this instruction fetch state i'm going to use a separate memory that is called as instruction cache instruction cache right and for the other uh, three operations like this for all these three operations we are going to use a uh, different memory and here again they will be having some registers which are common and uh, this memory oh, sorry yeah so this memory actually it will be representing the data cache so you can see we divided the cache into two types number one is the inst instruction cache uh, cache and second one is the data cache but still if you are trying to divide this memory into these two types or you can say if we tried to uh, perform data replication like this still we are going to face some kind of problems okay so uh, let me explain those problems like this i think this video has become very very long but still uh, i do not want to break the flow here so uh, if e even if you are trying to you know um, uh, replicate these resources then we have instruction fetch the first phase then we have open and load then we have execute and then we have operand store so because there is a separate instruction cache so this kind of problem will not arise hence we can perform instruction fetch again again so we have operand load execute and operand store again we can do operations like this instruction fetch operand load execute and operand store but still here you can see uh, here operand store and operand load both are occurring simultaneously so there is again there is some kind of uh, structural hazard so both are trying to access the data cache simultaneously okay so what we have to do is how can we resolve this kind of problems so only the way we can resolve this issue is by changing the entire pipeline stages okay so it is not only the memory which will lead to the structural dependencies sometimes sometimes the other resources also lead to the structural dependencies for example registers are there register file is there right for example these three stages which is s2 s3 and s4 these stages stages are sharing the register files so sometimes these registers are also going to create structural dependency right uh, maybe th there are different kind of issues will be there so uh, now you understand what is the structural dependencies and actually this uh, you can remove the structural dependencies there are different uh, processes to you know remove the structural dependency one of the example the pro processor is mips r2000 r3000 to okay they introduce a, a solution of structural dependency that is the processor name is mips mips r2000 and r 3000 so this this processor was also introduced but actually these processors are not in syllabus for us so we are not going to study these processors here so uh, f uh, in this uh, videos we, we are just trying to understand what is structural hazards what is control hazard and what is data hazard now you understand what is a structural hazard so in the next video we'll try to explain what is control hazard okay so that's it for this video so let us move on to the next video